Hello everyone and welcome to Girl Time Podcast. I am your host, Lanisha Huggins, and this is episode 18. And today I have a returning guest with me and also a new friend. Um, I have Miss Gwen Brooks, who um, was here before, um, if you have seen the previous episode, she was here with her sister and her mother and they talked about working out as a team because I saw them firsthand working out and I was amazed. And if you go back to the episode, you can see how amazed I was. So, <laughs> so Gwen, if you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I have been married for almost five years now um, to Jake and I have two little boys, Henry and Lincoln. Henry just turned three and Lincoln just turned one and I am actually almost 16 weeks pregnant now. Oh, congratulations. So <laughs> yeah, so we have another one on the way. Um, and I am a stay-at-home mom. Uh, my husband works at Ball State. And that's pretty much my life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so I do not want to mess up your name because um, I have a friend that named Shana, but she only got one in. So is your Shana? Yes, it's Shanna. Awesome, awesome. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Shanna. So I am also married, and let's see, it's been 11 years, and we have three little girls who are nine, seven, and three. Hopefully, um, they can marry Gwen's three boys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we don't know that there's a boy yet. <laughs> Um, and my husband is in ministry. He works at a church here in Muncie. And so we do that together. I would say we're a team in that, um, mm -hmm. minister to youth and young adults. Um, mm -hmm. and I homeschool my kids as well. So, um, our life revolves around home, just like yours, Gwen. <laughs> um, Okay, and so today, if you haven't noticed, this episode, we will discuss um, Gwen and Sh Shana, Gwen and Shana being stay-at-home moms and how it and if this um, COVID-19 have affected them in any kind of way. Um, we just wanted to know, like, I would love to know because I do not have kids yet, but we do plan on having some in the near three to, well, I said two to three years um, of having children. So um, my first question to you guys is what decisions, wh what made you become a stay-at-home mom? You want to go first, Shanna? <laughs> uh, sure, yeah. I think I would have followed my mother's footsteps in that regard in terms of staying home with the kids in the very like early, you know, precious years when they're little babies and toddlers. Um, so she, my mom did that. And I think I kind of just always felt a desire to do that as well, but I would not, I did not foresee homeschooling. Um, that was not something that I was very familiar with. I have not grown up in a homeschool context mm -hmm. and that was like, I don't know, it sort of took me by surprise. <laughs> and when my oldest was preschool age still I just started to feel I was just kind of like learning a little bit from friends and people kind of talking about homeschool I really just feel like I had very little knowledge of what that could look like um so anyway that was just like kind of I feel like God just sort of sort of gradually introduced me to the idea and through some conversations we just really felt like that was the route we wanted to take and that even God was was asking us to take um and I have to admit I wasn't fully on board with that aspect of being a stay-at-home mom I felt um why a little <laughs> um well again I think it had to do with that I didn't have context for what this could look like and I just in my mind you know little kids are really hard when they're two and three and four mm -hmm. they are just constantly pushing your buttons and pushing boundaries and <laughs> so challenging to discipline and I, I think I was just in my mind like okay we'll get through that and then I'll send them off to kindergarten you know <laughs> every mom feels sad about that 
Mm -hmm. them off but I still felt like that's just what I knew and so I felt like that's just what would happen and it would sort of alleviate (laughs) the difficulty of having them around me all the time um so I was a little resistant to homeschool but really felt a conviction that the Lord was asking us to do that and so I said yes and Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's just been a process to embrace it I can talk more about that later, but. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Gwen. Yeah, so I guess similar to Shanna, my mom also was a stay-at-home mom, and she homeschooled all six of us. Um, the three old, I was, I'm the fourth, and the three old, older siblings, they eventually went to a private Christian school um, when they got into high school, and, um, but the, the younger three of us were homeschooled all the way up um, through graduation. So I was just in that environment. I, we knew a lot of homeschool families. Um, my cousins were homeschooled, so we hung out with them all the time. And I just had a really good experience with it. I really enjoyed being homeschooled. We had a really good dynamic at home, I feel like. So I really wanted to be able to do that for my kids. And I plan on homeschooling. People often ask me like, oh, are you going to homeschool your kids too? I'm like, that's the plan, but we'll we'll see when we get there. Right. (laughs) Because I feel like so much can change. I mean, I really want to be able to, but like, I, I don't want to say like I'm insecure about it, but like, I'm so nervous because my mom set the bar really high. She's Mm. so organized. And she did such a good job. Things were very structured. And also, we were very different kids than my kids are. (laughs) My kids are very um, energetic and don't have long attention spans at all, especially Henry, my three-year-old. So it's fun. I love love being home with them. But it, it, it makes me nervous trying to capture their attention for teaching them in school (laughs) but we'll see how that goes and I was I was about to say that you have a little bit of time before you actually get to that so I do I do and I have to I have to figure out when to start too because I don't want to be like oh we're doing school now good luck (laughs) trying to ease into it so we'll see we'll see how it goes I'm just nervous about being organized (laughs) Well, were any of you um, working a job before homeschooling? Well, being a stay-at-home mom. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> pretty much. I, I had two jobs. Pretty much, um, I started working at Menards when I turned sixteen. Um, the Menards here in Muncie, and that's actually where I met my husband. Mm. Um, and I worked there up until I was forty weeks pregnant with Henry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So, um, yeah, I've had, I had a job pretty much as soon as I could up until I couldn't, <laughs> but I really, I, I loved working there and I really enjoyed it. It was a weird transition though, from being at work 40 hours a week yeah. to being home with an infant that I was like, I don't, I'm just, I was bored a lot of the time. Like I told mom yesterday, I was like, I feel like I have a newborn infant right now and I can't go anywhere or do anything. <laughs> That's stuck. like what it is right now for everybody. Everybody's stuck at right. home. But yes, mm-hmm. I loved working at Menards and I enjoyed that. Awesome. Shana? Yeah, I was um, finishing graduate school and working when our oldest was little and all the way up until um, our middle daughter was like a few months old is when I finished graduate school. So um, I guess I'm thinking back at that time, I just felt like I was juggling a lot, you know, mm-hmm. it's hard to wear those different hats. And as, you know, the oldest, she was, uh, you know, one and then one and a half kind of around that stage and then a newborn. Um, I just remember that feeling really, really challenging. And of course, mm-hmm. like finishing school is like the end of the, things are due and projects and I don't, you know, things like that, um, that I was ready to stop working. I really was eager to just mother and be able to focus Mm. on, I think 
may, I maybe didn't experience some of that same what you're describing, Gwen, like, because there wasn't a, a long phase of boredom, like there, I took time off with each baby that came, but um, I think I was always like juggling <laughs> a lot of things and feeling a little bit overwhelmed with managing different hats. So it was a, a welcome um, change to stop working and just focus on mothering. That's good because I feel like um, I don't know if I can be a stay-at-home mom because I love being outside <laughs> and I love working um, as much as I do. So I think that that would like the fact of me being in the house right now and I'm a um, I go to work, but being in the house right now and I have to be in the house, it's like crazy a little bit. So, <laughs> so I would definitely have to pray about that one. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely say it's not for everybody, but I mean, I don't think everybody should be like, oh, it's not for me. There's no way I could ever mm -hmm. do it. I think it's worth a shot. Yeah. You might surprise yourself. That's true. And you can take your kids out and do things. <laughs> yes. And we're going to talk about that a little later. So what is considered a normal day for you guys? Like, what does your schedule look like if you have one? Hmm. We don't really have a schedule. <laughs> I mean, with kids being so little, they're so, I mean, we get up, we have oatmeal every morning for breakfast. Um, and then the boys just play. I play with them. I usually, you know, do the dishes and do the laundry and then play with the boys and entertain them because they're not quite to the age where they can just like go off and play on their own. They're getting there, which is like really nice on those days when they play really well together. I've really started noticing that happening and that's been really nice. <laughs> um, but we don't really have a set schedule. Eat breakfast, play, eat lunch at 12.30, take a nap at one to two or three, play, dinner, bath time at seven. <laughs> so. Yeah, I kind of like um, vacillate between the amount of structure that I'm like functioning in. I, I don't always set structure well for myself. I'm like pretty go with the flow and um, when I like to just do things on a whim or whatever but my husband is a lot more structured so I think like I think we end up striking a pretty good balance with that but um so our morning can look very different from day to day depending on who wakes up when they don't all get up at the same time and I think that's a, a benefit of homeschool like my mm -hmm. my daughter she just needs to sleep in longer she just seems that her, her body clock isn't the same the other two tend to be up pretty um regularly like at seven not incredibly early but you know pretty consistently um so they'll often have already eaten breakfast by the time she gets up and anyway but generally then they do their schoolwork in the morning mm -hmm. before all the all covid broke out i would say we had more things like we might go to the y in the morning and they would take their independent schoolwork with them and get it done while mm -hmm. I go to a class or something. Um, we did that, you know, regularly. So now <laughs> things are a little bit different in that regard. But so generally they do their, their schoolwork in the morning, regardless of whether we went somewhere, didn't um, lunch. And then, yeah, pretty like free time, play time, cre you know, they're outside or creating or, um, one of the girls really loves to listen to audio books and um, Adventures in Odyssey. So she, she's a, yeah. she like. Is that your nine year old? Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. So she, does, she'll tend to be doing. So, I mean, I, we put boundaries on that, but she'll spend some time doing that or reading. Um, and then dinner prep. So we were pretty structured about when we have dinner, when my husband gets home from work and then, Usually I clean up dinner so that I, that kind of, it's not my only time of quiet, but they go play with daddy and um, get rowdy. And I just kind of like quietly like think, <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> all day my thoughts have been interrupted and 
I don't even mind doing the dishes when I'm quietly by myself just flipping. <laughs> so that has kind of become like my husband, he likes to clean. He would gladly clean up dinner for me. You know, I've made it and he would gladly do that, but I've, I kind of want <laughs> to do the cleanup so that I can be quiet for a little while. And then we just usually do some kind of reading as a family and bedtime usually around 7:30 or so my oldest two will stay up and read for a little while and the youngest one when the youngest one goes to bed so do your oldest two have a set bedtime schedule yeah well, it kind of changes depending on what's going on so like we're involved in things at church and some evenings we're just up later and so that kind of you know it's just not always the same but generally especially right now they're they're able to read until 8 30 and then they go to bed after that okay do they read in bed till 8 30 and then it's like lights out or are they allowed to like be wherever um well typically they crawl into like my bed me and Todd <laughs> and sometimes I will well and part of it's because so that they, they're all in one bedroom and so the three-year-old is asleep she's going to sleep in that bedroom so yeah they have to find another place but I'll often like and read with them I, you know until 8 30 so mm -hmm. we <laughs> so your bedroom is a gathering place while the three-year-old sleep <laughs> <laughs> pretty much <laughs> I like that I was um listening to well actually I was watching some video and um this celebrity she was taking a tour around her home and she got to the bedroom last because in the the top of the bed is said a sign that said gathering. And so she said it was the gathering place because that's where everybody end up in the middle <laughs> at the end of the day. So <laughs> that's exactly how it was growing up. And even like now, like at my parents' house, at the end of the night, if we're all at mom and dad's house, they'll go up, take a shower, whatever. And then everybody will just end up sitting on their bed talking <laughs> before we go home or if like we're spending the night there, like before we go to bed, like everybody just sits on mom and dad's bed and we just talk and laugh. And I mean, it's, it's a normal thing that we That's always good. do. That's good. Cause I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go in your own room. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't allowed to sleep with them as kids until like we, we had to go to sleep in our bed. But if we woke up in the middle of the night, we were allowed to go to their bed, which happened rarely, but mm. we never were allowed to go to sleep with mom and dad. That's cool. I I wonder um, how my husband will be once mm -hmm. we do have kids because he is very worried about other people just sitting on the bed. So <laughs> let alone some kids sitting on it. And sometimes when I babysit my nephews and I want the youngest to sleep with me so that I can catch him because sometimes he falls off the couch. And so he's just like, yeah, I've got to go in the living room. And I'm like, but the bed is comfortable. <laughs> so funny. I bet that'll change. Yeah. I, things are so different when it's your own baby oh man you know you're all of a sudden okay with poop and snot and saliva all over you <laughs> you're like then. oh i met the grocery store <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> all right so my next question is um i know that we talked about um what our your normal day is but just like your um well, not you, Gwen, but Shanna, <laughs> what does it like, does it take a lot of organizational skills to keep up with the day-to-day -day and like what are some challenges that you do face when you have a schedule and it ended up changing? Because we know that Gwen um, don't have a schedule yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> I do have some sort of schedule. I mean, during when the COVID's not going on. We go to the Y and things, but yeah, not right now. <laughs> so the question is, say it again. Will you so um, I know that it takes a lot of organizational skills to um, just the day-to-day -day activities. So what are some of the challenges that you face when you have a set schedule and things change? Hmm. Um, I mean things are just always changing I feel like in some ways like you overcome challenges in one season and then 
you feel like you kind of come you get into a rhythm with something like like getting up and having quiet time I want to I would like to get up and spend time with the Lord in the morning mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden my three-year-old is like waking up in the night and she comes in to our bed like we were just talking about and it's just like you'll go through a season where you're I just can't get up you know <laughs> so um I mean, there are just all sorts of challenges like that. I feel like um, I was trying to think through some, like finding time for myself or having regular time alone with my husband. Like, um, it's just like season by season, I feel like I'm just problem solving. Like, okay, you, you recognize, oh, wow, we haven't had a date in months. Mm -hmm. And you start to see that like something shifted that you didn't even notice when it did and now you're in a rhythm that you're not like happy with you know yeah. so I don't know I, I don't know if I'm answering your question exactly it feels like there's just always those types of challenges and you might sort of tackle it and come up with a good solution and then you find yourself a year later back in the same boat again because yeah. something shifted that you didn't you know you, you, didn't you, definitely, you definitely answered it. And I love that you said, um, talked about sometimes when it is hard to get out of bed because, you know, like some women that are single parent, they don't have the luxury of the help that is needed, especially mm -hmm. at like late at night. So that was, I like that. Yeah. I try to be gentle with myself and <laughs> things like that. Like I have a desire to spend time with Jesus and I do regularly, but if I would beat myself up over all the times I don't, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just gonna, <laughs> it's just not going to be good. So, yeah. That's good. So have you guys, um, I know that you guys usually like have your um, activities before the COVID-19 happened, but has the COVID-19 affected anything um, that you guys were doing as far as activity goes and just different things besides going to the Y, um, but have anything been affected by the being quarantined? Um, yeah, so we've stayed at home, obviously, a lot. And I, the boys are getting really antsy. So like, that's been really difficult because we don't take them anywhere either. I'm staying home with them or Jake is staying home with them. So that's been hard. So we try to go outside a lot more, even like when it's cold, we're trying to like at least spend just like a little bit of time mm -hmm. outside. So they're at least walking out of the door. Um, and we've definitely done like more crafts and stuff and like been coloring. Henry doesn't usually like to color, but we've kind of created that in him now <laughs> he's starting to enjoy it a little bit more um he's wanting to color actually he just said the other day that he wanted to send a picture to one of shanna's little girls oh <laughs> it was really sweet he's like can we send it in the mail <laughs> I'm not sure which we haven't done by the way maybe you'll get something in the mail shanna <laughs> man she would be over the moon if she I, got something from him <laughs> See, y'all um, setting stuff up already. <laughs> <laughs> it, nothing needs to be set up. They're adorable together. <laughs> yeah, they're good buddies. Yeah. Yeah, so we've done, I mean, more outdoor things. I've just, I feel like I've been spending more time with the boys teaching, like unintentionally teaching. Mm -hmm. Like Lincoln has all of a sudden just started saying new words like almost every day. I'm like, you didn't say oh, that yesterday. That's cool. <laughs> so I don't know if that's because all this or just because he's there developmentally now. But yeah. I've noticed that, which has been fun to see. And also now my husband has is on a two week um, leave from work. So he's now on day two of that. So he's going to be home for the <laughs> next oh, wow. two weeks. It's so fun. <laughs> Did he say something? <laughs> it it is good, and we're getting projects done. I ripped up the carpet in our bathroom upstairs, took the toilet out, and we haven't done anything with it. So now we're down to one toilet in the house. Mm -hmm. But projects are fun, and we're also painting the dining room tomorrow. So awesome. that's another thing getting coming out of this. Awesome. So has anything changed um, 
since the COVID-19, for the COVID-19 happening, um, has anything changed with you, Shannon? Yeah, we have significantly decreased activities, like just a variety of things. The girls had violin class and the Y and a lot of things at church. We, um, you know, being on staff there, just have a lot of different things that we're involved in there. Um, I, you know, just everyday stuff where like you, Gwen, we're not taking them anywhere at this point. So they like haven't left the house in like uh, weeks, I think. Um, so that it's oddly been really, really good though. I, um, think at the very beginning, the girls were really disappointed because a lot of things they were looking forward to were canceled. They even just like time with friends, we, mm -hmm. you know, Fam, other families we spend time with regularly we ha my, we had things planned that we had to cancel and then they 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 don't um they're sad about missing church like they're really they love to go to church and so that's really hard for them or at the beginning it was really hard for them and then easter you know so mm -hmm. there were planned things that had to be canceled and they for a, a, the first week were like really upset and crying about my daughter was like, life is ruined, ma. <laughs> um, but I think after it kind of sunk in that this is just the norm, New normal. Mm -hmm. we don't know how long, I have been really surprised at the way that they are just like really getting along well, finding things to do and enjoying time together. And they're like, they're not complaining at all That's anymore. Good. I know I'm I'm a little bit yeah I'm just surprised <laughs> it's almost like thing I, I, I've kind of been thinking a lot about this and trying to sort of pinpoint like what is different I think I think I'm more relaxed because a lot of things are off of my shoulders that I was just really doing a lot of things like um yeah leading different things and having mm -hmm. to prepare for certain things and so I'm I'm a lot more relaxed and um, also just like Gwen, I don't know if you would echo this, but like just getting out the door with everybody once or twice a day can be the hardest time. Sometimes mm -hmm. getting shoes on and coats and, um, and for us, we were always taking schoolwork places. We, so we had to have backpacks and I don't know um, that feels like, or, and we're usually running late. And so then I'm barking at people to hurry. <laughs> Are. and I, I kind of think there's been a relief of stress without all the running around just because getting in the car is the most stressful piece of it sometimes That's and, and also some of those things are exhausting for them so I, I just feel like everybody's a lot more peaceful mm -hmm. that's so funny because I would totally say the opposite for that getting out of the house and getting in the car is like what I'm most excited about <laughs> I've never heard nobody say that so why <laughs> I just because we don't go to a lot of places I mean I guess before all of this I I I guess I did go somewhere every day but it was just like that was what I looked forward to because it was the only part of the day that I did anything and yeah, I got yeah. to be around other humans other adults <laughs> and having social interaction um because other than that I'm around a one-year-old and three-year-old mm -hmm. most of the day and I don't really get to, to converse with people so that was exciting to me getting to go out and go to the gym or go to church I mean we went to the gym three days a week and went to church three days a week before all of this yeah. So with that gone, now we're just at home trying to fill the day with things, which is fine, but it wasn't a stressful thing for me getting the boys in the car. We were always early because we were ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, and thinking of our the ages of our kids, I think that makes a big difference. Yeah, for sure. Like my kids at this age are really independent in a way that I didn't used to experience you know and even my two youngest the three-year-old and the seven-year-old are like we'll play for hours together and I won't even hear from them so <laughs> yeah, there's yeah I think right it's I, you have to wait for your girls to get ready 
And then in my case, I'm just getting the boys ready. Mm -hmm. Henry's starting to get there, starting to figure out how to put like his shoes on, zip up his coat or whatever. But most of the time I'm doing it all. So I don't have to wait for them to come on, get your school, get your coat, get your shoes. Why don't you have pants on? <laughs> I don't have to do that. I do. I'm but barking. <laughs> I'm responsible for it. <laughs> That's so have any of um have any of your children asked about what's going on and if they have how have you explained it to them Henry I mean he's just three so he doesn't really understand we just say we don't mm. want to get other people sick and we don't want to get sick and we've been talking a lot about germs recently which is fun you know because sometimes he's he'll like drink after me he goes I really like your germs <laughs> he's like we're trying to teach him like how germs get passed along mm -hmm. I mean just the random little things that he says that are new because of what's <laughs> surrounding us right now it's just really cute I mean he doesn't understand though what really is going on mm -hmm. he knows we don't want to get sick and we don't want to get other people sick especially like Nana my my mom's parents, Nana and Paul, they just moved to Hilton Head and we had a trip planned like a week from now, I think, mm -hmm. and that we aren't able to go on. And he was so excited, but Aww. he knows he doesn't want to get Nana and Paul sick. So we're going to have shrimp and see an alligator later, <laughs> is what he keeps saying. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fun. It's fun to teach him new things and See what his little brain is coming up with with the things that we're saying that's cool so he like alligators he, yes he's Ooh. obsessed with anything like alligators and dinosaurs he's really into right now that's very interesting mm -hmm. <laughs> so our three-year-old is similar in the sense of like she just doesn't really understand but she's not asking tons of questions but i that made me think when one time like last week or a week ago we put medicine on our cat like flea medicine and and we've been talking a lot about like not getting people sick and people are sick and she says coronavirus all the time <laughs> <laughs> we can't go because of coronavirus or whatever <laughs> but anyway i was putting medicine on the cat and she's like mom how did you know that that the cat needed medicine all he does is meow like she was trying to figure out how he told me that he was sick mm -hmm. and needed medicine. And so I had to explain it was not that kind of medicine, but That's cute. anyway, but the older girls are, yeah. Like, I think we've just tried to be like, I, I've wanted to be honest with them. Like this was serious. This thing that's happening in our world without, of course, she's wanting to scare them. You know, I, I, so there's, there was this tension between like, I want to protect them. Mm -hmm. from being scared about this and yet um I don't want to pretend it's not happening or that um I don't know it's just trying to find that balance of like how to talk about it so similar mm -hmm. to what you said Gwen just talking about like people are getting sick and we need to protect people we're probably not in the greatest danger because of our age and um you know we're not seeing this in kids being such a problem but it's really serious and we know people who are at risk and yeah. we can't go see them right now because they're older and I don't know it, I I also maybe thought I was afraid that they would be afraid and they haven't seemed at all to respond in fear that's good yeah well, I've been trying to we've we've been trying to like pay attention to how much we talk about it as well mm -hmm. that it wouldn't dominate everything mm -hmm. because I think that would feel scary to me if I were a kid I think but at the same time it's real and it's happening and we need to talk about it some you mm -hmm. know so we try to just pay attention to how much <laughs> my husband and I how much we're talking about it in front of them you know as we discuss things that we're reading or seeing on the news or whatever yeah that's good so how is it when, um, for being in, been in house maybe all day now, but like during the homeschool period, I'm going to go back to this, but during the homeschooling, um, period of the day, how do you, um, engage your 
kids to interact with other kids because I know like sometimes it's hard because like you're in a house and you're in your bubble and so usually like when you go outside I know for some people they don't really interact and it's hard to interact and it's, it's that awkwardness so do you guys experience that and um like how do you um engage your kids into interacting with others and you're talking non-covid time right yes yes <laughs> yes i'm sorry <laughs> oh, no that's making your children socially interact right now yes <laughs> yes we are distanced <laughs> right now <laughs> not now don't go outside guys <laughs> yeah. I, I mean i'm trying to think i we have a lot of social situations like um that tends to be the thing people wonder about homeschool is like how are you socializing your kids or whatever and I just that has just really not been an issue because of the am amount of things my our kids are involved in there are mm. just a number of things I feel like they're getting plenty it's different it really it definitely looks different they're not in a classroom with you know 20 or 30 kids their same age ever and they unless they you know if something changes and they go to public school they, they will not experience that they're pretty natural with other people as far as I can tell like I think when we're at Chick-fil-a or something and they're in the play dome like they're just talking to the kids that are in there you know That's and cute. at playgrounds and stuff it feels like they have enough what feel like normal social situations that they they've built skills to talk to people but I will say I don't know. This can be a good and a bad thing as a homeschool parent. I do have more ability to sort of coach them through situations um, because I'm there and I'm observing and the interactions are smaller. They're always individual or a small group, you know, mm -hmm. so they're not like away from me managing social interactions for hours and hours at a time. That is not happening in their lives. So I do have the privilege but I mean it can be a negative I can I try not to hover you know I like mm -hmm. have to um intentionally and deliberately just like walk away and let them be a goofball in a situation which it can be hard because I'm watching this happen all the time <laughs> I'm watching them like in a social situation doing some weird thing like and kids are just kind of weird actually I think all of them <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know so I'll watch it and I'll want to like intervene and be like oh honey um maybe you could <laughs> <laughs> this would be probably more socially appropriate so I try to do both sometimes I do that I, I have the benefit of being able to sort of coach them and give them feedback like I noticed you were talking to that little boy and he said this how did that feel and what were you thinking I, it seemed mm -hmm. like you got really quiet when he said that so I like to be able to do that. And yet I have to be careful not to try to direct everything. Yeah. That they're, let them just make mistakes and learn and try things and be awkward. And, you know, as far as us, I mean, we we're not quite to like the school age yet. Um, but the boys go to the gym often where they go to the child watch and they're around different kinds of kids there and then they're in the church nursery or church Sunday school and um, they're in that and we plan uh, when the kids get older to do some sort of sports mm -hmm. and I'm having a feeling that Lincoln is going to be very musically inclined which Jake and I are not but we will <laughs> probably be putting him in some sort or teaching him giving him less or having someone give him lessons in some mm -hmm. some sort of musical instrument because I think that's going to be a thing which is going to be a learning curve <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I mean we're just not there yet I don't think to like where we're worrying about it or really even thinking about it yeah that's how good. are you noticing musical stuff in Lincoln just curious he just loves music so much he loves to dance and like he's like started singing like <laughs> Henry like one of Henry's favorite songs is um Bye Bye Miss American Pie <laughs> so Lincoln will just run, sing around the house going bye 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 <laughs> which yeah. is so sweet and then my husband has a um, little bluetooth speaker 
And as soon as Lincoln sees it, he'll like bring it to Jake and like try to get him to play the music and like start dancing before he even plays it. So I think, I mean, who knows, but I think he's really gonna, gonna do something with that when he gets a little bit older. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun to see though. That's awesome. I just love y'all responses because like I'm 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 learning as I go and I have been to the point where I took care of my younger sisters and brothers but they were already 14 15 by the time they came and lived with me so it's not like we from the bottom and then raise them on up so I love your responses because it's really setting a president for president for me for when I become a mom so I really appreciate you guys so much. <laughs> Just remember that every baby and every mom is different. So you can't, yes. don't, don't, yeah. don't count on something. Happening. But it does give me encouragement though. Yeah. It, yeah. it does give me encouragement because I really wonder like how I'm going to be as a mom because I don't, I grew up very differently than the way that I want my kids to grow up. So I just appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Okay, so I um, have two more questions for you guys. And so the first one I wanted to kind of put together, but I want to talk about the importance of having a support system um, because I feel that like some people, they really, really get stressed out, especially doing it on a day-to-day basis and your husbands are at work and maybe you're at home, you're at home by yourself. So it's very, very, it could be very, very stressful. So um, wh- how is it important to have a support system and also making time for yourself? Because I know you talked about this earlier, Shanna, when you wash your dishes and that's your quiet time. So um, how important is it to have a support system and also taking time for yourself? support system is really important I feel like it's really hard to raise the kids and have just do life really without Mm -hmm. some sort of support system to help you along the way and I've really noticed that a lot with this being the COVID-19 going on for the last month or whatever and I can't be around my support system and have that village to help with the kids. I mean, before this, I probably saw my mom four or five times a week. I mean, even if it was just working out together at the gym or at church or us going to their house. And now Mm -hmm. I think we've seen her maybe four times in over Mm -hmm. a month. So that's been like a really big change. Um, And even like, yes, my mom is a great like a great support system but even like just being able to go out to their farm and the boys just like running off their energy not even having that Mm -hmm. support and a sense of just having them be free because we live here in town so we don't really have that luxury that's really been a big difference Mm -hmm. but it is so important to have and also my sister lives in Colorado Springs. And so we FaceTime probably every day, mm-hmm. which is a support system in itself. Cause she has a little boy who's two months older than my youngest. Okay. So we're kind of going through the same stages right now with them, which is fun. Cause it's her first. So she asks questions and I'm also like, I don't remember this happening. Is mm-hmm. your kid do this too? <laughs> so it's fun to have that. And it's, necessary to even just like when you feel like you're going insane I'll text grace or facetime grace be like I'm going insane Mm -hmm. my kids will be screaming in the background her kid will be screaming and we'll just like talk (laughs) try to zone them out (laughs) but it's good and it's helpful to talk to someone else who's going through the same thing Mm. and as far as taking time for yourself I'm not very good at that (laughs) not yet not yet I will and I'm trying I think this goes along with having a set schedule and a pattern and being organized having setting that specific time for myself my husband usually works at night so he usually works from 4 p.m to 12 30 a.m mm-hmm. so usually my alone time is when I get the boys put down 
Henry goes to bed around 8.15, 8 or 8.15. So I'll have some alone time in the evening, but I don't like set specific time. Be like, okay, this is when mommy's going to be alone and you're going to go play with your truck. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get better at that though. I think some alone time, specific intentional alone time would be good for me. Okay. Uh, again, I feel like the, I'm think I'm hearing Gwen and I'm thinking like, it's just so different in different stages and different seasons. Um, the ages of your kids just make a huge, huge difference. But so I, across the board, I think the sentiment that it takes a village to raise your kids rings true. If I think, oh, uh, you can't even quantify all the ways people have helped us. Um, raise our kids, you know, from mm -hmm. people pass on hand me down clothes to us. <laughs> like I, I think we have like maybe purchased, I could probably count 10 things that we've actually purchased for our children to wear. So like something like things like that or babysitting or, um, and just like people, teachers outside of me, like they're Sunday school teachers and we are part of a co-op. So other, um, women who are teaching them at co-op, um, I don't know, you know, I was, I think those are things you can't quantify, but we have blind spots as parents and we need their, we need other people to come alongside what we're doing, you know, right. to have well-rounded children. So I think those things are all happening in, in my kids' lives. Um, I don't, we don't have family close like Gwen was talking about. So that is an element that doesn't, you know, doesn't feel the same for us. It's, um, our family is not super far, but they're like an hour and a half away. So, mm. we, so are you from Muncie? No, originally from the Fort Wayne area. Okay. Yeah. But even that, so my parents will typically take, have the kids for a, a long weekend or even a week, a couple of times a year so that mm. God and I can get away, um, to like have a, a weekend alone. And that is just, yeah, super, super important for us. Um, so getting time alone, I guess, other than those moments, like doing dishes, I think so, it has been helpful. I'm, I'm just a person that functions well in rhythms. So if I create rhythms in my life or my husband and I work to create certain rhythms, then I will like stick to them going to the Y. If that's a rhythm for me, if I go every Monday morning at eight or whatever, then I'll mm -hmm. go. If I have to make that decision in the moment, I, I won't go. <laughs> so similarly, I, we have gotten into a rhythm where he, both he and I, we spend three hours alone with the Lord or reading book. What I, we, we do a variety of things in that three hours, but three or four hours um, once a week. So I, I do that on Saturdays. I think mm -hmm. that is like, I, I couldn't even measure the impact that that has on me, but just being able to be alone with the Lord and with my thoughts, <laughs> as I mentioned that earlier, I've just, I've identified not that long ago that a struggle of being a homeschool mom is how interrupted my thoughts are. And so just having uninterrupted thoughts is like priceless. Mm -hmm. Um trying to think what else like I, I just I think it comes down to just like intentional um deliberate planning in mm -hmm. for those types of things even like getting uh, dates with my husband or whatever like if we don't plan that then we don't do it you know mm -hmm. we'll go months and have not gone on a date or whatever so yeah some intentionality goes a long way that's good. So how would you guys encourage, um, and this is my last question, but how would you guys encourage um, someone that is struggling um, with being a stay-at-home mom for right now? And um, like, just what would you do? To, well, what would you say to encourage them? <laughs> Man, I don't know. I mean, I... I'm trying to think of like when Grace is having a hard time or like even when I'm having a hard time, I feel like there's nothing you can really say like 
especially with younger kids too and they're just like going crazy for n- mm-hmm. no apparent reason and I guess older kids do this too there's nothing that can be said to you that's going to make that day better sometimes sometimes mm-hmm. it's just you're going to have a bad day but 95 percent of the time the next morning when you wake up it's a brand new day and everybody's in a different mood but there are definitely times where it's just it's hard and that's that's just part of it it's not they're not always going to have easy days sometimes you're just you can't say anything to make it better, (laughs) (laughs) which I've really learned a lot, but reaching out to people and just talking to people is super helpful. Even Mm -hmm. if it's just for them to listen to you complain and saying like, I'm just having a really hard time and not, not expecting them to fix it because they can't, Mm -hmm. but just if you're able to verbalize it, let somebody know it's hard. I think that helps. That's good. I like that. You said a lot without, <laughs> without feeling like you like said that. a lot. <laughs> but that was very good. Yeah, I think in any given day or moment, you can be really overwhelmed with the task, the weightiness of raising kids and all the ways you're messing up. <laughs> I mean, I, it's, I think there's a constant battle with, um, yeah, insecurity about how I am not the perfect mom or I don't know different things like that but um, something that feels like an encouragement to me as I think in this moment I have a nine-year-old and I I can just look back and see different seasons Mm -hmm. have mentioned that I think throughout the podcast as we've talked about these other issues there are just seasons Mm -hmm. of what and you'll look back and you'll say, man, when my middle daughter, Sayla, was uh, <laughs> a toddler, when she was two or three, that was a very, very rough season. And it lasted for a long time because she was really passionate. And a yeah. passionate two-year-old is so hard <laughs> to <laughs> um, be around. And um, But if I look at the season I'm in right now, it feels night and day different. Sayla is a joy to be around and she's still really passionate and days with her can be hard and mostly are really, really delightful, you know. Mm -hmm. I think there's some encouragement there that no matter where you are, you know, whatever you're looking in the face, I think you can. I was just saying there are in every season there are challenges and there are joys and when I'm in the challenges, I think I have to zoom out and recognize this season will not last forever. (laughs) I can get through this season and I will look back on this and feel, you know, recognize that this is not forever. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily get easier either. Like people are like, Oh, it'll get easier. Yeah. That certain thing gets easier, but like, there's going to be something new around the corner. Just you wait. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I mean, the challenges are different and that makes it easier in a sense. You're not dealing with the same thing over and over and over again for such a long time, but there yeah. still are challenges constantly. It's not like one day you're just going to wake up and everything is solved and peachy. Yeah. But, but I do, think, I, I do think though, I, if I look back certain, you know, there might have been a year that was just hard and I'm in a year right now that just, it really is easier. I would say it feels differently enjoyable. It still has challenges, but unfortunately that is the end of this episode to our listeners thank you guys so much for listening and thank you shanna and Gwen, for being a part of this conversation and letting us get to know what happens in your life as a stay-at-home mom be sure to like comment and subscribe to our channel on youtube and the anchor app we look forward to seeing what you think about this episode and what ways do you parent as a stay-at-home mom or if you plan on being a stay-at-home mom so until next time